Let's say it again. Carlos Lockman. Yes. I mean, you moved on to a big kid foe. I mean, what really stood out about He did a great job for us and worked hard. It was, was certainly about relationships. Um, you know, grateful for his time he spent with us and you know, excited to see what he does in the future. How did you let him identify Watching, I mean, you watch a lot of film, uh, but then also the process of development, getting your hands on, getting to see these guys in camp. You know, our coaches traveled to over 23 satellite camps this offseason. Um, we have camps on, on our campus. They went to 321 different, you know, off school sites, uh, you know, this past year when it comes to like the spring, the spring window, uh, evaluating film, you know, consistently, being able to watch that and making phone calls, talking to people within programs, uh, talking to high school coaches, talking to people around the players. How did, you, how did you develop that skill? I mean, time, right? It's not, not necessarily like the 10,000 hour rule, right? But what are the things, what are the attributes you're looking for in each position? What do you what do you have an interest in? What makes your system tick? And then can you adapt your system to those players? Coach, in terms of just what you wanted, the vision you had for this program when you first came here, how close are you are to that? And especially with the way Phil said, you know, limited NIL. I don't know that Phil ever said that. I mean, I, I think anybody that thinks that that's reality is living in a, in a real world. Yeah. What player would we miss on if we had that? Exactly. What do you want to make? Exactly. What should I pay? What should I, I'll pay myself this year. I'm going to pay my, like, this is not realistic, right? But are we are we well taken care of? And where are we at from a standpoint of, are we close to where I expect this to be? We've seen constant growth for our team every single year. That's been, uh, that's been fun. There's a clear goal, right, for us and where we want to be. We're not there yet, so... That's part of the process. And uh, are we there yet? When I was at Georgia my last year, we won a national championship. I could have told you before the season started we were going to win one, right? And even going into that year, I think we have one player on defense that was uh, preseason all-conference, which how much does that matter? It doesn't. We had five guys on that defense drafted in the first round. So everyone sits around and has an expectation for what you should do and what you achieve. The reality is the game stuff be played, you know, and those things that happen. Am I excited and happy with where we're at from a growth standpoint at this point? Absolutely. Uh, is, the, is the job done yet? Absolutely not. When it comes to Dylan, obviously the last two quarterbacks you had, very more of a very athletic, great arm talent. How do you kind of protect him from himself? Yeah, it's obviously, right. Oklahoma, you should have big, long touchdown runs. How do you kind of manage his willingness to want to kind of make that be played? And kind of also play that at all? Yeah, just having a really clear vision. You know, if you look at Bo from year one to year two for us, he was two different players. What we needed him to do year one to win games and what he did in year two, you know, we used him in a lot of different ways. So it's about Dylan understanding what we expect from him. You know, when's a yard worth fighting for? Uh, and when's it okay to, you know, slide or take a knee? Uh, and I think that's something that just happens with time and, and us doing a good job of clear expectations for him. Coach, you talked about the certain books that you learned, the art of war and things of that nature. Why were some of those books very important? Well, the other books that you Yeah, I, you know, it's not about like how many books can I read, but for me, it's something over time that I really didn't love early. I started with audio books and I said, okay, this is a place where I can actually get better and improve. There's some knowledge in here that you can share and if it can just improve me in one area of my life, then maybe it's something that can carry over and then be able to turn that around and share it with the team. I think it's been something that's been really impactful for us. So, you know, Art of War this year, Hidden Potential, you know, last year, Good to Great. Um, there's been some other books along the way. I, I really enjoy Malcolm Gladwell books. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, pieces in there that can carry over to what it takes to become excellent. Um, but those are things I'm always going to try to draw from somewhere else for a little bit of inspiration and, and what that might look like for our team. Dan, Dylan was... just the SEC. I think we're going to have time, right? But it seems like they have both of them to read the level that people are aspiring to or are closer. Why is that? Well, I think, one, you just talk about location of players and talent. When you go look in the NFL, you're going to see more players from Florida, Georgia, Texas, right, in that region of the country, especially when it comes to defensive linemen, right? There's bigger bodies in those areas. So, But now that location isn't the only factor that matters, right, when uh, you're able to travel to some of these other places, I think that creates more opportunities for other schools. Yeah, there's certainly a benefit. Relationships pay off, right? And work ethic, you know, is even more valuable. So if you want to work at it, I think you do assign great players. The location part is, now that you're up in Oregon and not yeah. down there in that area, is that a fight? For sure. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a real challenge, and that's part of the process for us is identifying, okay, what's the reality of this person being able to come here? There's, there's a lot of times you might win the battle and the kid wants to be there. Well, his parents support that, you know? I always talk to, to players about not picking the most convenient decision, but picking the best. 
there's a, there always might be a more convenient option that's right in your back door, but that doesn't mean it's the best option for you. So what's that mean we're looking for? Guys that are growth oriented and want to go to a place that they can dream about being able to go and don't mind that that might not be the most convenient option, right? I didn't take the most convenient path to become a coach at Oregon. It wasn't easy to live in eight different states for my family, but the sacrifice was worth it. Uh, and I think we try to find the same for some that, players that have that mantra. Is that message more prominent now than maybe ever had to have that conversation? I, I think it's something for us to be successful at Oregon that it certainly has to exist, right? Uh, if we just recruited the state of Oregon, our football team wouldn't look like it looks today. Right. We have to be able to leave outside and go into states like Texas and go to California and go uh, in the southeast to go find great players. And wherever there's great players, but those are the kind of players we want on our team. What the state Michigan in the last two years? What are your view of those programs and excited to yeah, I've got uh, great admiration and respect for those guys. Um, the job that they've done, the games that they've won, you know, I think that's what makes this conference so great is you're going to have some great matchups within the season as well, and we're, we're certainly looking forward to competing. Dan, when it comes to, like, the helmet-to-helmet -helmet communication, how do you balance, um, you know, saying enough but not saying too much at the same time so you can let your quarterback also be a leader? Yeah, gonna be a pro that's going to be a process for us that we have to evaluate after each game. And certain. You know, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking to NFL coaches this offseason about what that looks like. It's about knowing your players, too. Like, how much information can they take? There's some quarterbacks in the league that you can tell them everything possible, and, and they're able to take that information, break it down, and utilize it. There's some when you tell them one thing that it's going to give them one, you know, one thing too many. So it's about finding what our players can handle and letting them play fast uh, and then doing a good job of having open lines of communication about that process. Who were some of those coaches that you – did talk to. About I mean, it. We've, we visited with a ton of, uh, okay. a ton of different coaches. Andy Reid, I'm a Chiefs fan, so I sat down with Andy Reid and talked about it a little bit. What allows Jeff to marry style and substance the way he does, Dan? I mean, has to Say it one more time. What allows Jeff to marry style and substance the way he does? That off the field that he can dress the way he does, that he can rent Lamborghinis when he's out there and whatnot, but while he's also in LA, he's. At, Sounds like a, a Jeff question to me. But he's also, go, my point is, he also goes to a gym while he's doing it. And, and it's a celebrity gym that costs him. God knows how much money because he's working to bid bigger. He's going to ask Jeff, I guess. Dan, I'm curious with the playoff expanding and looking at the country for the 17 game season. Make any adjustments leave here? Yeah, that's been a, a real topic of discussion for us. I think that's really on, on us as coaches. Your team has to be prepared. You have to have great depth, um, you know, to be able to do that. Um, but at the same note, you're going to have to make some make some small adjustments when it comes to your practice schedule. What's important? Where does that contact need to happen or not happen? Um, you know, towards the end of the year. But we'll adapt as we get to that point. You have to have a really good feel for your team. We're really fortunate that we're going to have a great sports uh, performance, you know, department that really monitors our team's levels. Um, throughout the season, so we're able to kind of be ahead of injuries before they happen. And as long as we continue to have great communication between them and our weight room staff, I think we'll be able to be uh, healthy at the end of the year. Could your experience at Georgia help with that, making the national championship to make in that run? Could that kind of help you in that? I think any experience that I've had certainly helps with that. You know, being at Sam Houston State and playing the semifinals certainly helps with that. Because of that, Lincoln talked about this yesterday. Do you foresee you could actually get to the point where you, like the NFL, you may actually rest players? If you you know, I, I think uh, that's something you have to assess as you get there. Our goal will certainly be to win every game. Every one of them matter to us. Like being being able to be a part of a conference championship matters to us. Winning the conference, like those things matter to us. So there won't be a game that we say, okay, this one's not important. Uh, let's pass it down the line. I don't see that necessarily happening. Assessing how you play the players, I think that's something that you have to continue to do every single week. Uh, and you already do that to a sense with redshirt rules and when guys can play or not play. I think that's something we'll always measure. I think it's meant to be a Yeah, again, for us, it really doesn't change how we recruit, you know, what I feel like you have to have to be successful to win. You know, certainly we might see some of that, but I think you know, also people discredit maybe what we saw at Utah and Oregon State and some of the programs that already played 21 and 12 personnel. I believe in a format that, that is winning football and what kind of players you need to win football games. And that will definitely matter at the end of the year. So we want to recruit size. We want to recruit speed. Uh, and it's not just because of the conference. Does it require a quick follow-up in the era where guys may not stay four years or five years like they used to? Is there more of an emphasis to recruit size earlier as opposed to recruiting a guy that might be able to put on size or the time? I will say that the way that recruiting has turned, it's probably made it where projections are something you would do less 
Uh, and, you know, when it comes to a recruiting standpoint, those guys that were projections before now may become like portal guys as opposed to guys that you think that can develop pretty quick. It should be very exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Dylan does. I'm, I'm impressed with his knowledge and ability to pick up what we do. It's, it's certainly different than what he's done before. Part of our job as coaches is to figure out what Dylan does best. And I think you figure that out through reps. Um, you know, what plays is he most comfortable with? Who does he feel great about targeting? What can he audible? You know, we were able to give Bo a whole lot of, you know, the reins to this offense. He's able to change plays. Those are some things that Dylan hasn't done as much that I think he's really excited to do, and, and we're excited to see him do. How much of this talk about the things that you're in the middle that can be stuck from insecurity from other places? Because I think generally when somebody doesn't win in recruiting, it's easy to throw out an excuse that doesn't really fit their narrative, right? And I think it's easy to say the low-hanging fruit is, well, it didn't work out for us. They must have beat me because of it. We lose recruiting battles, and what we do is we say, okay, why did we lose? What did they have to spend? And you don't really worry about who you don't get, right? You worry about the ones you do get. But uh, I, I can't speak to somebody else's thoughts or pre preconceived notes. I don't know that, but uh, I'm not really worried about it. Oh, just Terrence, Terrence and Jeffrey just said that when it comes to the expectations and kind of the outside noise, you they kind of block it out. Is that something that you install in them, or they kind of do that on their own? Yeah, we, we kind of have a, a theme in our program called FIBU, Really, that's what it means, right? It means don't worry about what everybody else thinks, right? We're, we're focused on the people in our room and what our expectations are for our own team. Ben, you, you traveled to the big house this year, played against Michigan when you were at Georgia, you were at the national championship game. What were kind of your expectations for a game like that? Yeah, they're a phenomenal program. Um, I know Sharon's done you know, an unbelievable job. Obviously, they've built something over time there that has sustained power. You know, I got an opportunity to compete against them in the Orange Bowl when I was in Georgia, um, and I haven't actually been to Ann Arbor you know, to see that. So that'll be that'll be a fun experience, a fun venue for us, but certainly a, a team worthy of competing against. It's hard to stay in the state. I guess what's your impression of Jonathan Smith as a coach? Having gone against him, just you know, staples of what, what do you expect to see? Yeah, I think uh, Jonathan does an unbelievable job of uh, developing a team. He's been a part of a lot of cultures where they had to grow a team, and I know that he'll be able to do some of those things, same things in uh, Michigan State. I think he's authentic. He is who he is. He's not trying to pretend to be somebody else. Uh, you certainly appreciate that. And he's, at the end of the day, he's just a good person. Uh, he's going to get the best out of the situation and the guys that he has there. Yeah, what allowed, Go ahead. What, what changed over the last year where just shy of a year ago, the, the move to the Big Ten being official and on the recruiting trail where a year ago certain schools could have used that against you. But for the last year, you've been able to use that and say everything's level. And now that you're here, how has the last 51 weeks allowed you to change that? Yeah, when, when you have uh, teams try to poke holes into what's not, not good in the situation, there's a lot of things it's hard to poke holes in when it comes to Oregon. Once we had clarity about our conference and the direction that we're headed, I think that solidified a lot of things for our future. Uh, you didn't have to talk about the what ifs, you just talked about the reality, right? Where we're headed. It also allowed us to recruit in different regions of the country that we haven't necessarily touched yet, but now we'll be a little bit more of our footprint. What what recruiting battles among teams in this conference outside of the LA schools you're already doing that, but what are how have those changed over the last year as a result of this? Yeah, just really same answer. Is there any part of the Pac twelve miss? Oh uh, yeah, I mean there was certainly some some uh some fun moments in that league. I think you just saw the best version of the Pac-12 this past year. You know, when you look at the draft, you see that. You look at the seasons some of these teams had, you'll see that. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fun when you know it came to that. But you know, college football has probably never been more exciting than it is right now, and I'm glad that it's really clear where we're headed and what we need to be a part of. What did you learn during your time in the SEC about not just the recruiting part, but like how to operate a championship program on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, I mean, it started really with my time in Coach Saban and seeing if there's a blueprint. Right, um, and then going with Coach Smart and seeing how that blueprint can adapt, right, and it can adjust to your team, what, what's important for the place you're at. So being able to pull from those, you know, two places on what organization looks like, what's a daily schedule look like, you know, that, that certainly has helped me uh, in my career. Is there a difference? Is there a difference really? I mean, mindset-wise, of building a good SEC team as opposed to building a, an elite college football team. Like Ohio State or an Alabama. Sam, you're hammering what I've been saying, man. Yeah. Just build a great team. It doesn't yeah. matter what conference you're in. Build a great team because to get at the end of the year, you need a great team. Yeah. It does. They, they throw those conferences out at the end of the year when it matters, right? Yeah. So uh, that's our focus at Oregon. We've been trying to build a great team, regardless of conference. You need to have be strong in the trenches. You need to have great players outside. You need to have great quarterback play. You got to play solid defense. Like all those things matter, and that's that's what, what our intentions are. Dylan Davis. Get a guy like that. Is it like getting a guy 
do is in doctorate school or something, and you understand, I mean, some things you don't have to teach them, some things you do. How do, yeah. you, how do you approach that? Yeah, say he's more like high-level masters. Yeah. Right, yeah. but yeah, but, you know, he has an experience. I think if you look at the best quarterbacks in college football last year, you see guys that had a lot of experience. Uh, Dylan has that, right? So it gives him an opportunity, a leg up, to maybe understand. This term might have been called something different where he's at before, but he can translate it really quick and know how he's he's going to read that. Well, Dante behind him, obviously, the start that you said last year, obviously, you guys were the, the conversations bring him in along with him and gave him the positive. Yeah, Dante came here with really clear expectations of how can he compete become the best player he can possibly be. I think he's been really satisfied with his growth. I think he has an awareness and a realization, too, of looking around college football and seeing a lot of guys that were fifth, six years, COVID seniors last year and saying, those are the guys who perform the best. It's not about getting thrown in fire. It's about being ready when you do. Uh, and when you're open and honest with your players about, hey, I've got high expectations for Dante as well. But that's that's part of the development and what that's going to look like. And we can't predict the future. He might be a guy that we have to lean on this year. And that we you mentioned down right yeah, I think there's you know there's truth to that. I think again, like I said, any team that's operating at a high level right now has great opportunities, right? Um, and that's something that it would be silly not to embrace. What exists there, our affiliation with the uh, uh, programs around our university what make us so special and that, that exists you have to be you know uh, to not see that to not see what exists in our organ and see what Sabrina Neskew is able to do in the you know WNBA or Kayvon Tibble has done with the Giants and being affiliated with Oregon it helped them right it helped them be able to accomplish some of those goals yeah they're, they're relentless they do a great job uh, I think they do a good job of identifying talent early you know uh, do a great job of getting guys on campus, so they've, they've done a great job there. Dan, a couple of uh, scheduling-related questions, because we want to talk about it a couple of times. Uh, with, with the Washington game and the move to the conference, that putting at the end as opposed to Oregon State now moving up, do you like that? Would you prefer to keep Oregon State at the end and Washington midseason like it had been for 100 some odd years? Yeah, I'm really indifferent in look at just because it's not something I control. And then you're the only team in the league who has to play eight straight weeks and in terms of, yeah, you can't change it, but we talk about competitive equity across the conference and a double by season that your schedule is the way it is. How do you feel about it when you saw that, that you were the only one to have? Yeah, again, it's not something I can control. So, like, getting upset about it wouldn't do anything for me. I, great great opportunity for us to prove what kind of team we are. Do you point about relationships between Jordan, Florida, et cetera, Southern Utah, yeah, just be authentic, be who you are, and be diligent about that process. Be engaged. Spend, spend the time necessary. You're not going to get to know somebody through one phone call, right? It might be a FaceTime. It might be a Zoom, right? It might be an interaction on campus. It's coming to see them, you know, when you get an opportunity to be on, a coach, on the road as a coach. So try to take advantage of all those things and add those things up. What does your gut tell you about how special this team might be? I think it's too early to know, no, it's right? Not. It feels like I just kind of ate of the meal. we got to see how it settles. Um <laughs> yeah, I, I feel really good about this team. I think I've told people that this is as talented a team as we've had you know, here at Oregon, but becoming a team is a different, a different piece of that. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely excited about the direction that we're headed. I uh, feel good with our progress over the summer. I feel like we have some really good leaders on, on the team. Uh, but it still has to come together. It's still a little early. When you, how much film have you watched? I think you mentioned summer, some summer scouting, yeah. how Big Ten opponents. And what do you see when you watch these teams? Some impressive teams, right? I, I think there's phenomenal coaches in our league. There's obviously some phenomenal players. Talk about the amount of guys drafted out of this conference last year. Um, but you see some teams that were, you know, built to last, which uh, is exciting. There's going to be some tough scheme ch uh, challenges. And then there's some things that we don't know yet that are, we're going to find out in the middle of the year that we have to be really ready to adapt to. Did you realize that you make it very clear to you in the end before you want to make a decision? Yeah, I think it was clear early that he didn't want to have a prolonged process. I think it's a happy marriage because I think at the end of the day, I think Dylan knew where he hoped he could end up as well. Um, so I don't know, you know, what it would have meant for other teams. I don't, I don't necessarily care what their situation was, but at the end of the day, I think Dylan wanted to be at Oregon, and he certainly wanted him here with us. Yeah, 
to achieve that. Well, again, there was a little bit of merit from, uh, you know, being familiar with each other from my time before at Georgia and those conversations. Um, and then, yeah, again, I could, I could hop on the road uh, early in the process to be able to go see him, you know, uh, quickly and uh, touch base with him. We did that immediately. As soon as we were able to, we did that. You know, those phone calls, those conversations, being able to get to know each other, we, you, you know, you, you attack that quick. Dan, when you look at Ohio State, I mean, you were talking about there with you guys have some recruiting battles there. That you guys have two teams expect to be at the top. But it's a game that's already being talked about. You know, the game in October. Does, does it feel like there, there's an opportunity to kind of grow a bit of a rivalry there, being you know two of the premier programs in the same conference now? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little early um, to know that, but you know, certainly you get excited about playing in premier games when you're, when you're in this role. Coach, you've uh, competed in a lot of games or a lot of big venues. Uh, you get to add the big house to that uh, list this year. Just talk about your impressions of Michigan's program and that place. Yeah, obviously a phenomenal team. There's a reason they you know, were able to win so many games last year, and they've done a great job building the program there. It's got a story in history. It should be one that we're really uh, pumped to be a part of. Dan, you guys could say they've been mentored by the greatest coach of all time, and the guy that's running the team that's won the last of the national championships. I don't know how often you reference them in, in everyday conversation with players, but how much does it help you to have those reference points? And I don't talk about you, but these two guys are. Yeah, you know, luckily I don't think I have to do that too often. And I always kind of like talking about the future as opposed to the past. But for me, it's certainly been beneficial. I always talk about quality of experience over quantity. You know, I'm certainly sitting in a seat in an earlier position maybe than others. Um, um, but I was able to have some great quality of experience because of guys like that, you know, in the past. But you ever hear Nick Saban coming out of your mouth? Or, or, or <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I certainly feel those moments. Yeah, I certainly feel those moments. His leadership, you know, the way he's came in and attacked quickly, recognizing he has to connect with players. Danny, real quick, when you did see Kirby's comments last week, was, it, was that just like a big chuckle for you? Yeah, yeah, it was more like a moderate chuckle. It was like a uh, <laughs> <laughs> moderate chuckle. Yeah, how confident are you that Dylan was talking about early uh, in, in the summer, ironing out the details with, with Poncho and getting the snaps down? Because even in the spring game, there were a couple that were off. Yeah, same thing, you know, looking in the last year, if you came into our practices, you'd see Jackson Powers Johnson went through some similar deal. It takes reps, it takes repetition. I'm pretty confident we'll be able to handle that. Hey, how about Dylan's you, leadership? How, does, how have you learned to to, uh, to, to manage um, your intensity? As a, as a young coach, relatively young coach, you know, as a young head coach, you, know, you seem pretty composed, pretty unflappable here in this moment. Um, you know, we've seen that fire from you, um, you know, whether it's you know, on social media, on camera, on TV. Like, what have you done to, to, to be able to, to, to learn to, to manage that? Um, yeah, I don't know that I have a great answer for that. You know, I do think on the field that your players play with the same passion and energy that you put out there. And that's important for them to see. But you also have to level set. And when does it actually, you know, improve the performance? Or what the, what's the result that you want? And if there's a benefit uh, from responding certain ways. And for me, I do a lot of risk assessment. Like, when does that make sense, right? There's going to be moments where fire and passion are necessary, uh, and then there's moments where that just creates chaos and it's not beneficial. So I guess I'm always thinking of the end game. What's your general level of intensity you think around the team on a, on a daily basis? Uh, you'd have to ask them. I don't know. I, I don't think it's flat very often. It's okay. About Dylan's leadership, for someone who's you know coming in as a newcomer, even as a quarterback, is, is it impressive the way he's kind of been able to emerge as a leader? Yeah, and I think w what I've told some other people today is Dylan's leadership what makes it unique because I think he realized I don't need to come in here and start yelling at guys because the route's not deep enough or you're not running something right. He came in, he said, I'm going to attack relationships. I'm going to build relationships with the guys on our team. He's done a good job of that, and that'll probably lead into some more vocal leadership, uh, a little bit more demanding on the field. Dan, Oregon's been a national recruiter for a long time, and you've coached all over the country. Do you think that makes you better equipped to enter a league like this? It's very national now. Yeah, I think you know, certainly my experience um, being at a place that you know is a brand. You know, I think all those things add up and, and create an opportunity for success for us. Why is getting more vocal leadership out of Terrence something that that you guys want from him? So far since yeah, I think the comfortable thing in football is to lead by example, right? And again, uh, Terrence has always been a guy that's done a phenomenal job of leading by example. But the reality yeah. is you need some guys that are vocal leaders on your team. Uh, and you're never going to see those hands shoot up, right? So um, I think our guys have to see that, understand how that impacts our team. And, and we have that now. We create a lot of that this summer. What are your expectations for Justin Jacobs to help you? Yeah, Justin, you know, has had a great offseason. He dealt with being, you know, banged up from time to time for us early. And now... Uh, seeing a healthy version of him, I think is going to be really exciting. I know he has some familiarity with this conference as well. So being able to go into some of these venues and places that he's been before, understanding the, you know, the type of play 
uh, that exists here, I think will be a benefit for him. <coughs> Should be exciting. Yeah, in fact, I know it'll be exciting. What's unique about that? Well, the fans. You know, anything is about the people, right? We have passionate people, passionate fans. But there's some great traditions there. Whether it's shout after the third quarter or uh, you know just the intensity that our fans operate with, I think all those things add up. We talked earlier about building a team to win in the trenches late this season. Was Oregon built that way when you got there, or that shit? I think in, in, in pay, uh, places, you know, they had strong offensive line when I first got there. I think there were some moments of growth for the defensive line, um, and I think they were a lot closer to that now with that picture looks like. Who came up with the phrase, the grass is damn green in UG? Uh, I, I, me, I guess, but I, I know you said I, it. Was that your yeah, idea? Or? I don't think I'm getting paid for it. Oh, so yes. <coughs> it's on t shirts. Somebody's thing. getting paid for it. <laughs> I think genuine people are genuine people, right? And if you if you have that and you actually have an interest in knowing what other people think, um, what makes them tick, how they operate, then that doesn't really matter how old you are. Um, certainly, I can probably relate to a you know NBA young boy song a little bit better than maybe some of these other guys, right? But that's not going to be the difference in uh, you know a win or a loss for us as long as you're authentic when it comes to relationships. You, you talk about you know the national brand and the national brand. How how difficult is it to maintain a base of where you want to? while also touching areas that are loaded with high school talent. Yeah, like anything, it takes work, right? It takes work. And, you know, the great thing about the guys that we're recruiting right now, a lot of people grew up and this is their dream school. It's it's become a school that uh, has created prominence because of that stage that it's on. Um, so you'd be surprised when you walk into a home in New Jersey or you walk into a home in Miami or the DMV or wherever that might be, St. Louis, Missouri, that there is an affinity for our school. And then it's about that process of quickly identifying, okay, how realistic is this? And does it fit? Do they fit us and do we fit them? Where does that affinity come from? Last one, guess. Where does that affinity come from? Yeah, I just think that growing up around the sport and seeing guys like Marcus Mariota or Penny Sewell or the guys that they've been able to see on a national stage, you know, Michael James, the Anthony Thomas, I think that exposure that's been created, you know, through the university, I think has made that a, a possibility.